So we've seen how to calculate the number average molecular weight. Now we'd like to calculate the weight average molecular weight associated with step growth polymerization. And I think you can see that the process is going to be very similar. We start with our equation for the weight average molecular weight in terms of these summations. So in the numerator, we have a summation of the product of the number of imers times the molecular weight of an imer squared. And in the denominator, we have the sum of the product of the number of imers times the molecular weight of an imer. We know the number of imers from this relationship. We found that previously n naught over 2 times 1 minus p times 1 minus p times p to the i minus 1. That's the total number of molecules that are imers at a given point in the reaction. And the molecular weight of an imer, we're going to say, is i times the monomer molecular weight. So if we substitute all these terms uh, into our equation, Notice that some of these parameters cancel out. In fact, actually a lot of them do. And we're left with uh, the monomer molecular weight times the ratio of two summations, the sum of I squared, P to the I minus 1, over the sum of I times P to the I minus 1. So we already obtained an expression for this term in the denominator when we calculated the number average molecular weight. We showed that this summation is equal to 1 over 1 minus p squared. Now we'd like to obtain a similar expression for this summation in the numerator. And as a starting point, let's see what that looks like when we expand it out. So the sum of i squared p to the i minus 1, I can write as 1. So when i is 1, I have 1 squared times p to the 1 minus 1 is 0, which is 1 plus, uh, if when i is 2, I have 2 squared plus p to the 2 minus 1, which is 1. So 2 squared p plus 3 squared p squared plus 4 squared p cubed, and so forth. Okay, now notice that, uh, let's see what happens when I take the derivative of a different summation, uh, i times p to the i. So if I expand this out, i times p to the i looks like this, p, because when i is 1, I have 1 times p to the 1 plus 2p squared, plus 3p cubed, plus 4p to the 4. So if I take the derivative uh, of this summation, I end up with these terms. 1, uh, the derivative of 2p squared is 4p, or 2 squared p, plus 3 squared p squared, plus 4 squared p cubed, etc. So just based on this analysis, we can convince ourselves that the summation i squared p to the i minus 1, which is what's in the numerator of our weight average molecular weight equation, is equivalent to the derivative of the summation of i p to the i. Now we can further simplify the summation of i p i by noticing that I can rewrite this as i times p times p to the i minus 1. So basically I factored out 1p from this product. So if I multiply p to the i minus 1 times p, that gives me p to the i. But notice that p is a constant. So I can factor this out of the summation and express this equivalently as p times the summation of i p to the i minus 1. Now, what I'm interested in actually is the derivative of this uh, summation. So Therefore, I can substitute in and express this as the derivative of p times the sum of i p to the i minus 1. Now, this is very helpful because I already know what this summation is. This is the one that we previously evaluated uh, when we calculated the number average molecular weight. It's equal to 1 over 1 minus p squared. And we multiply this times this p that we factored out. So we're really taking the derivative of p over 1 minus p squared. So again, we use the product rule to do that. Uh, so uh, uh, derivative of p holding this denominator constant, I get 1 over 1 minus p squared. And then in the second term, I get 2p over 1 minus p cubed. Again, I'm just using the product rule to take the derivative. Then I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this first term by 1 minus p. So I get a common factor in the denominator of 1 minus p cubed. And then when I add these up, I end up with this term, 1 plus p over 1 minus p cubed. So now I know how to express the derivative of the sum of i times p to the i. Uh, and I showed earlier that that's equal to the sum of i squared p to the i minus 1. So now I have an expression for this term 
which is what's in the numerator of my equation for the weight average molecular weight. So I substitute in my 1 plus p over 1 minus p cubed in the numerator, 1 over 1 minus p squared in the denominator, simplify, and I obtain an expression for the weight average molecular weight that that's equal to the monomer molecular weight times the ratio 1 plus p over 1 minus p. So now that we have expressions that allow us to calculate the number and weight average molecular weight, we can then uh, proceed to calculate the polydispersity index associated with uh, step growth polymerization. So remember that the polydispersity index is the ratio between the weight average and the number average molecular weights. Substituting our expressions for these quantities, we find that the polydispersity index is equal to 1 plus the extent of reaction P. So let's think about this because this has some interesting uh, implications for uh, step growth polymerization. Remember that in order to produce uh, high molecular weight polymers or high degrees of polymerization, which is what we would associate with useful uh, kinds of materials, that we need to go to very high values of the extent of reaction. So remember that uh, to get a degree of polymerization of 100, that implies that P has a value of 0.99, or we're going to go to a 99% extent of reaction. Uh, so basically, for useful polymers, uh, the value of P is going to be approximately equal to 1. So therefore, for polymers that we're going to produce using step growth polymerization, the polydispersity index is going to be approximately equal to 2 for anything that we're able to produce. Again, this is subject to the assumptions that we made uh, in this analysis, but uh, as a rule of thumb, uh, this shows how the uh, progress uh, of the reaction based on interactions between functional groups uh, among monomers and growing polymer chains produces a distribution of chain lengths that uh, is associated with a polydispersity index uh, around the value of 2.